Hi and welcome back for another Cottage Cuts YouTube video tutorial. This is Marla with Mad About Cards and Crafts and today we are telling a story with a split scene Easter card. My card is faith based but I'll talk a little bit about why I set it up the way I did and how you can use it with other dies you might have that are not faith based. I'm using the He is Risen with Empty Tomb, the Hilltop with Crosses. I've die cut all of my pieces and because this is a larger scene I'm using a 5 by seven card base. I've laid out my scene. I'm going to use the He is Risen to split the two scenes as well as the bottom of that hilltop. I'll leave that hilltop in place because I need to know where to place my stencil. We're going to set the mood for the lower portion of our card which is going to be the empty tomb. For that I wanted a sunrise stencil because this is going to be a joyous occasion. I'll use a piece of tape to place it at the bottom of that hilltop. I don't want my stenciling to extend into the top portion of my scene. I have a small little brush that I'm using to get in between every other ray using mustard seed and then I'll start with an even smaller brush and add the wild honey. So that is going to create that orange and yellow which is going to really bring in that joyous occasion. You can split your scenes in many different ways as I mentioned. You could make the top scene where somebody is very sad or the scene is set to a a sad occasion and then the bottom half is happy. This is a little bit different than some of the slimline cards you've seen me create where I create a full scene from top to bottom. I'm actually telling an entire story with my card today. I'm got a little bit of over stenciling at the bottom and I want to make sure that that tomb is going to cover that up before I move on to the top portion of my card. For the top portion I've added the hillside and I wanted to figure out where I wanted my sky to be. I don't want to bring my sky too low because I don't want it underneath that hillside. That hillside, once I trim this panel down, is going to go all the way across my card. So it will be another barrier between the two scenes besides the sentiment. I started with weathered wood, adding that gloomy appearance because the death of the Savior would be a gloomy, uh, sad occasion for those that were there. I wanted to add more to the mood by adding some rain, so I kind of have this modern take on a rain stencil and I'm adding a little bit of the stormy sky. I do add off camera a little bit more of that weathered wood to the left and the right side just to blend it out a little bit more. To start my sunrise I wanted to add more of that wild honey and then I'll blend it out with a mustard seed and come back in with a larger brush and blend more of that wild honey. I do come back you'll see in just a few minutes that I am going to set this aside and I wanted it to dry. I wanted sometimes when distress ink or distress oxides uh, dry out they blend a little bit better so they don't look as splotchy. That was not the case uh, for this card. So I am going to come back and do a little more blending. Here's a look at the real empty tomb in Jerusalem. So this is where they believe that Jesus was buried. I wanted to recreate the colors in that stone. So I'm starting with antique linen, which is going to be my um, light base color. I'll add it to each of the pieces of this rock. And then I wanted that uh, orange tone. So if you've seen some of the sandstone in either Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, some of their rocks do have a slight orange undertone. So I'm using that rusty hinge, which does also have a little bit more brown than, say, uh, the pumpkin distress ink. So here I'm just adding it around the edges of this uh, scene and then I'm going to go over it with my gathered twigs and that's going to tone down the orange. It will still allow that color to show through. It's adding shadowing to the rocks 
and you'll see once it all comes together how beautifully the colors really look. I'm going to add some texture with some splattering. So I lost a little bit of footage. My camera shut off. I'm going to add splatters of rusty hinge and this is where it shut off so I just wanted to talk you through that. I add the ink to my mat, spritz it with a little bit of water and I'll do the same thing with the gathered twigs. I'm going to add a lot more of the gathered twigs to this scene right down here. I did want to talk about a giveaway. I am giving away this empty tomb in order to qualify. All you need to do is leave a comment, like the video, and make sure that you're a subscriber. Here we're going to work more on the scene. So for this bottom portion, I'm adding the dirt and I went with that antique linen. I'm using what was left on my brush to add some of the gathered twigs. I didn't like the blend so I tried adding mustard seed and I realized that I need one more color. Uh, fossilized amber has more of a brown undertone so I'll go over that spiced marmalade and part of the mustard seed with that fossilized amber and it does end up drying back and blending much better. I did a little bit of water spattering to add a little bit more texture to that sunrise and then I'm going to, I lifted it up with my microfiber cloth that lifts some of that ink and then I'll dry the panel. And we have a couple more pieces that we need to color. I'll start again with that antique linen for my hilltop. I'll use what's left on my brush of the gathered twigs. And then instead of adding a lot of splattering to the hilltop, I'll start with a wet water brush and just add some water splotches to that portion. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the gathered twigs. For the doorway, because we have so many neutral tones on our card today, I wanted to use different shades of brown. So for the wood on the doorway, I went with more of a gray brown, which is going to be the frayed burlap. And then I'll add those pieces using a little bit of wet glue. Now I am going to add the back to the doorway because I did want to show the shadowing on the inside of the cave that I didn't want the sun rays to be showing through. So what I could have done is I could have moved those little posts more towards the inside of the doorway. It would have made the doorway a little bit smaller. Instead, I just kind of have a very small lip, which is going to make it a little bit more challenging for me to add that back piece. So my suggestion would be to just move those little wood posts in a little bit further so that this back piece will fit better. I started with frayed burlap and now I'm adding a little bit of walnut stain and I'll turn this over and you'll see that it's just going to barely fit without having a reveal on either side of it. So once I get this in place, we'll move on to those crosses. And I, again, I want that nice contrast between the hilltop and the crosses. So I will go very heavy handed with the walnut stain, again, adding a different tone to the card, adding a little bit more interest. So when you're going with neutrals, try to mix up your colors and add different tones of those neutrals neutrals and that's going to break up your card a little bit more. Here's where I'm adding that little bit of spattering to my hilltop just giving that piece a little bit of texture. I cut this frame it's about an eighth inch smaller uh, the outer edge is an eighth inch smaller than my 5x7 card base. I did cut a 5x7 card base out of blue cardstock. You could certainly just cut a panel and not waste an entire piece of blue cardstock if um, you're conserving on your paper. But I really liked having that eighth inch reveal of the blue because I think that it just tied in the blue from the sky a little bit more. As I mentioned, this hilltop is going to fit all the way across my cards. I wanted this piece to tuck underneath the frame, so I did lift the frame a little bit so that I could get it to tuck. I'll place my largest cross in the middle and my two smaller crosses on the left and the right side. 
For my empty tomb, I am going to uh, have a little bit of overlapping. Instead of tucking it under my card, I really wanted to add it to the edge of that frame. So I started with the empty tomb and I added one of the rocks on the right side to see how much, because that's the larger of the two, um, I wanted to see how much it was going to overlap and that would allow me to make a really good decision about where I want to place my stone. I didn't add any dimension to my card panel this time. I'm just going to adhere it directly using some wet glue. Again, you'll see it's going to have just the tiniest bit of reveal, but again, it's tying in that blue from my top portion of my scene. And now we're going to start building where the tomb is. I did want to mention that we did have a winner from my last video. I was giving away the fence with grass. That winner is Tina C. So I want to congratulate you, Tina. Please contact Mary Marsh. Her information is in the description box below. Send her an email. Let her know that you are the lucky winner of the fence with grass and she'll make sure that the die gets out to you. I did want to mention that the giveaway is available to those who reside or have a mailing address in the United States. So please make sure um, that you do have a U.S. mailing address because of the expense of mailing these days. We have had to limit who um, were able to send these dies to. I cut the grass that goes with this empty tomb and I also colored it with peeled paint so it's going to add just a little bit of pop of green. I stacked uh, the He is Risen. I die cut it three times and glued all three pieces together. I left it white because I thought that it tied in with my frame and it really finished off the card so all of the colors are tying in together. I got a little bit of the blue on my panel or on my frame with my finger. I always get little spots of color here and there when I'm creating but I just have that electric eraser and that helps cut that down. So it's able to just remove that little bit of color that I had. For my sentiment, I am going to make it more of an arch. And so once I get this in place, I'll start adding my wet glue. Because this is a delicate die piece, I am going to tap it off onto my microfiber cloth so I don't get any of that oozing underneath. It just helps the glue to just be enough on there that it will adhere, but it's not going to squeeze out the sides. And once I finish adding this sentiment, that will complete my card for today. So I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope you give this split scene design uh, some thought and maybe try your own hand at recreating it. Instead of a 5x7 card, you certainly could use a mini slimline, but because of the wider um, dimension of the hillsides and the tomb, I went with a 5x7 and I think that this card really tells a story and is absolutely beautiful. I want to thank you for joining me and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.